and welcome back. Here we are to talk about um, JavaScript and drawing real-time data with JavaScript. In the previous video, we took a look at this renderer that draws these vertical bars, right? So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to create my own renderer and let's talk about um, how we would create a new renderer, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the same procedure that these renderers use. So essentially you're gonna draw a, you're gonna write a function that takes in the frequency array and the canvas context and then any other information it needs to draw. And then it's going to loop over the array of frequency data. And for each item there, it's gonna draw something on the canvas, okay? So let's get started. I'm gonna make a new file and I'm going to call it um, boxes render renderer.js. And uh, I think that's good. So we'll call it that. And maybe I'll go to this vertical bars renderer here and I'll just borrow everything. I'm just going to copy it all. Right. And then I'll paste it here like this. OK. So there we're started. And um, I'm gonna go to main now. And so I'm exporting the render method here. And if I go to main, I can you know, import the um, boxes renderer from uh, dot slash boxes renderer dot JS, right? And what we'll do is we'll take this boxes renderer right here, because that's the render function that came out of this file over here. And what we're gonna do is at the bottom here, I'm gonna go and get, um, I'm gonna go to this section down here, the render function in main, right? And I'm gonna comment out the last renderer we used, and I'm gonna add the new one here, okay? And this one requires that we include the frequency array, the canvas context, and the width, and the height, okay? And so if we play this, it should look like the previous one. Okay, so let's go look at our box renderer now and see what we can do here to change it and modify it and make it something unique, right? So um, at the top here, I did kind of some standard code. You're probably gonna just do this in all your renderers. You're gonna, um, and actually, wait, let's fix this too. Let's do this as width and height, okay? So this is th this this line of code here. These three lines has the job of erasing the canvas. If we take that out and then we look at the renderer, it looks a little weird because it's drawing the lines and then it doesn't erase them. So it's still drawing on top of what's there, but the the greatest line is what's left, and that's all that we see, right? So we you know it looks neat, but we probably want to erase something, right? Now the the value here determines how fast the thing disappears. So you could make this any number we saw earlier, right? So I could do 50% and then they'll kind of they'll kind of erase faster, right? They won't leave as, as much of a trail behind. Okay. So let's stop that there. Okay, next, the bars and the frequency length, right? So you know, you probably want to do a little bit with your data to figure out what numbers you have, like how many there are. You maybe you want to divide them up over the width or height or some other range, right? Um, you know, like for colors, for example, if you want to get the whole rainbow of colors, maybe you want to you want to take the number of bars and divide by the the color wheel, right? Okay. For this, what I think I'm going to do for this example is we're going to draw a bunch of boxes. So I'm going to draw a rectangle from the corner in the upper left and the box will grow towards the lower right depending on the volume and the frequency okay maybe we'll set the color based on the frequency so um, we can leave maybe we can leave these things in place i think i'm not going to use this value though the step value so i'll delete that but i'm going to use the number of bars and the um, the color step okay and then this is going to be the width of the line so we'll just leave that at three we could change it if we want and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just comment out all the stuff here. And then let's walk through the things that we need to do. So our first step here is to normalize our value. So let's set um, const and I'll set the width w equal to um, uh, 
frequency divided by 255 times the width of our canvas, okay? And then I'll set constant um, H for height. This is gonna be the width of the box that we draw and the height of the box. So this will be frequency divided by 255 and we'll normalize it to the width and the height of the canvas. So this is gonna normalize to the height. This one will normalize to the width, okay? Next, to draw a new rectangle with canvas, we'll do context.begin, wait, begin path, and uh, we'll, we'll just start our begin path there. So that starts a new drawing. There's nothing in it. It's just new blank, empty shape, right? And then what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll draw a rectangle with canvas context.rect, right? And actually, let me get the code hints there. So canvas context rectangle or rect gives us four parameters. So X is the starting point. Y is the vertical starting point. So this is the upper left corner of the rectangle. And then it asks us for the width and the height of the rectangle. So we can put X and Y and width and height, okay? So I've got W and H defined up here, but maybe we'll start our rectangle from the upper left corner. So I'll say zero X, it should be all the way on the left side, zero Y, it should be all the way at the top, okay? And now we're gonna set the, um, we're gonna um, set the, the stroke style. So before we draw anything, uh, we have to set a style to draw with, right? So I'll say stroke, uh, stroke style, equals, and you know, I'll just copy this one from down here. We'll use the same style. Okay, so you can think about it this way as like begin a path says, let's start a new drawing. Rectangle says, okay, let's outline like where that drawing is going to be, you know, give it an X and a Y location, a width and a height, and there's nothing drawn yet. Stroke style is like putting a color on our brush. Okay, so we've added some paint, but we still haven't drawn anything. And the last step, if we want to draw a stroke, that means like, you know, outline this, this shape right here, we'll do ctx.stroke. Okay, and that actually it does, the, does the drawing. But it's going to do the drawing with the value that you set here on the drawing that you created here. So we kind of say like what the drawing is, what the style should be, and um, and then we, we, we stroke it, right? Also, the line width determines how thick the line is, right? So let's give it a, a try. Oh, there we go. So that doesn't look too bad, right? It's kind of interesting, you know? Right? I don't know. Actually, I'm kind of, I was thinking it was going to not look as good as that, right? But that doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, and then if we wanted to do a transparent color, you could do, um, you know, 0 0.5 and maybe all of the um, the squares will be 50% transparent, you know, um, right? So that's not too bad. So here's a challenge for you, right? So I like that, but what if I wanted to move the rectangle into the center of the canvas, right? Or what if I wanted it to draw from the left, from the, the, the right bottom corner or, you know, one of the other corners? Give that a challenge, like make that a challenge and try it. Basically, it's going to have something to do with these two numbers here, and you'll just need to calculate the X and Y position for your rectangle, okay?